Today's video is brought to you by storyboardthat.com. Please visit teachercast.net slash storyboard that for a limited time offer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tech Educator Podcast, episode number 83. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a great show to do for you today. We are going to be talking all about app smashing with the great John Carippo. We have some great guests with us and our co-host. I want to bring on Mr. Sam Patterson. Sam, how are you today? Hanging in there. Excellent. <laughs> Good to see you. Jeff, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Jeff. How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for being here. How are things over on Instructional Tech Talk? Things are going great. Had a good week this past week and looking forward to releasing some new content and a couple of new screencasts this week as well. Excellent. You're also doing a second podcast. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, EdTech, you should know. Yeah, there's a couple episodes coming out. There wasn't one last week. We're going to double up this week. Uh, but it's all of, it's about a five to eight minute podcast. It just talks about an ed tech tool that you should know about. That's uh, hot in education right now. So EdTech, you should know is the other podcast. Excellent. Also want to bring on David. David, how are you tonight? I'm doing really well. Uh, I'm on mile 13 here as I've been uh, plugging away all afternoon working on my ADE application. Fantastic. So it's great because I get to get some exercise in while I'm also trying to be productive. Excellent. And Josh, how are you tonight? Doing wonderful. Uh, having a, a very successful uh, New Year's resolution, uh, biggest loser thing with my family right now. So we're in, we just finished week seven and collectively the nine of us are down 160 pounds. So really, really cool. Wow. Really well. well, thank yeah. you guys for being here tonight. We have a great show. I want to bring on our guest, Mr. John Carippo. John, how are you today? I quit my job this week. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, sir. That is excellent news. It, it felt good. Tonight, we're... To just say, I'm going to do something else. I'm doing something else now. Very, very cool. Today, we're talking all about app smashing the idea of putting two apps together and having something be absolutely creative before we get to that i want to talk about something that david just mentioned which are the apple distinguished educator applications now the applications come around every i believe it is two years and they opened up at the beginning of february and they're due at the beginning of march and john you're an apple distinguished educator tell us a little bit about the ade program well, uh, you've already identified the key element there, which is uh, every other year Apple opens up a window. Um, there's, a, there's a website they have, uh, I believe it's ade.apple.com, and uh, you do about eight items. I don't, I don't know what the current state of the art is, but I think it's about an eight-item reflection, and then you make a two-minute video, and, um, and then mysterious things happen, and if it goes well, you get an email about two months later, and they say, Come and hang out with us in a wonderful and exotic location for five days. And and can you tell us a little bit about the application video? Because you know, there's a lot of stuff following the hashtag ADE class of 2015. And there's a lot of people that are out there uh, applying. How many people apply each cycle, do you, would you say? I don't know that there's an exact number, but my guess is between six to 800 would be my guess. I mean, there are people that await... Like myself, I, I, I was lucky I got in on my first attempt, but I had waited six years to get my body of work where I thought it would be an acceptable level. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that are – they're gearing up for that thing a year, a year and a half, two years ahead of time. How many people actually get selected per class? Whew. Well, it's hard because last time they, they combined Mexico, Canada, and the United States. Um, I'm going to say in the U.S., there's um, – Maybe uh, between 50 and 75 every other year, if memory serves correctly. It's not a lot. It's not a lot of people. One of the questions that, that comes up a lot is what does it take to get into Apple Distinguished? Now, we've done a lot of podcasts last cycle where we brought on Apple Distinguished educators, and they talked to us a little bit about tricks of the trade, how they made their videos. 
what tips would you give somebody who's out there trying to come up with the perfect Apple Distinguished video? I would say, you know, probably the biggest thing I see because I'm involved on the on the Google cert certified side as well, and uh, biggest mistake that I see people make is they say, I want to go there and learn to be a fill in the blank, and you're kind of already it. It's more that somebody's acknowledging your body of work and. And what most organizations are looking for when they have a distinguished or certified person is that they're looking for somebody who's kind of a thought leader uh, regionally. You don't have to ne necessarily be a national power, but you're going to want to be presenting at Q or regional events like that. If you've done some stuff at ISTE, that's a nice thing. But then there's the other part is they just don't want people who are a fan of Apple or a fan of whatever product. They want innovative users. So those, to me, are the two essential pieces, is that uh, you have a large impact. You, you're typically presenting to thousands of people. Like if in your application you say, I trained everybody at my school, probably not enough. Um, if you say, I've loved Apple since 1985, that's not going to get it done. They're looking for real innovators, and uh, typically uh, you already are one. They're just waiting to give you the correct uh, shirt and label that says, join us officially so, so John you're saying that you know teachers re really need to approach it as a hey Apple I've been a fill in the blank for years that's the the tactic I took was I'm already doing this you guys might as well welcome me in because uh, I'm already do doing film things I'm already doing video things I've already taken a district to one-to-one -to -one. So, you know, why not just have me working inside the loop with you guys? Well, let's talk a little bit about that district, for instance. When you do become an Apple Distinguished Educator, could you talk to us a little bit about the relationship that Apple forms with either the individual or with the school district? Um, yeah, on the – as far as the school district side, there's a series of, um, of uh, papers you have to file to make sure that you um, – that you are not in conf conflict of interest. Like, for example, if you're the person that is in charge of actually buying all the Apple devices, um, there are legal uh, parameters for that. Yeah, I see what you're doing. What you're doing there, Sam. Um, <laughs> if you um, and and then some districts, I know it's it's less stringent in California, but there are some districts back east where you cannot accept a gift of over twenty dollars. Well, it's going to be a problem in that case to work with Apple. So they actually have a form where your um, your legal representatives from your district can say, we are observe the terms of what's going to happen in this, and then we will approve it. And there's all kinds of things like form, se for form 700s that you have to deal with. It's not a hard process, um, but Apple is very cognizant of the uh, the realities of the legal, of the legal side. Well, we are certainly out there interested in seeing people who are out there and uh, applying for ADE. I know on the hashtag, we've all been sharing our videos back and forth. David, you said that you're working on your video. Talk to us a little bit about the process and what you've done so far. <laughs> um, well, you know, it's been, uh, I, I'm trying to follow kind of what John's uh, sentiment is. You know, we've been doing a lot of this work already for years, and now I'm just trying to curate it in a way that makes sense and makes a case for why I should be uh, brought into this group. Am I echoing? Should I put on headphones? Uh, you're okay, but maybe headphones would work. Okay. Now, while he's doing that, John, let me ask you a question here. Has there ever been an Apple Distinguished Puppet? Um, almost, but not yet. I'm, I've got one in mind um, that would probably be an ideal fit. But Sam has uh, kept him locked in the trunk all day, so I don't know how ready to perform he is. I don't think anyone needs to talk to Waka. I'm all the puppet you need. <laughs> <laughs> very, very nice. Um, John, you know, thank you for giving us a little bit of that information. We're going to actually take this little bit here and put that out on a video. and Because I know we have a lot of people who are talking about Apple Distinguished Educators. So if you are out there and you're listening to this and you're trying out for AD, let us know. Share your videos. We'd love to hear from you. John, one of the other things that you do is you talk about something called app smashing. What, what is app smashing? What I do is I take my phone on a small ball peen hammer. No, 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 no. Wait, is that an Android? Yeah, I've got a 45-minute presentation ready for this. <laughs> so that's not what you meant. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I, I've got to be um, 
I'll, I'll kind of take you guys back through the history of, uh, of the, the app smashing concept. I've been teaching video for a long time, and uh, back in the old days, uh, like 2001, um, and I'm teaching video yearbook, and kids would come up to me and say, I want to do this, and I'd say, uh, iMovie doesn't do that. And another kid would come up and say, I want to do this, and he'd say, uh, iMovie doesn't do that. So what we started doing, what we uh, in the video side would call um, round tripping. And I, here's the best scenario I can think of. If you wanted to do a video that was Brady Bunch style, so there's one, two, three, one, two, three, so there's nine up, right? You can't do that in iMovie. But what we figured out was, well, you could do picture and picture one time, export that clip, add picture and picture a second time, export that clip, add picture and picture a third time, export that clip. You do that nine times, you got Brady Bunch in iMovie. And uh, so this is the idea of round tripping, which is making programs do things that they cannot do by themselves. Another really fun one that I have a lot of fun with Andy Losick on is, have you ever tried doing green screen animation with a Keynote? In, you know, in Keynote, you can animate things, right? You can do titles and all that. If you put that over a pea, pea soup green ugly background, and export it as a QuickTime, you can actually now open that in iMovie, giving you this awesome level of animation control and titling control that you would have never had in iMovie by itself. <laughs> so that's the basis of where I come to app smashing, is how do I do more than the regular thing? And I want to give a huge shout out, I hope I'm pronouncing their names correctly, it's in the show notes, um, Camilo Ga Gali uh, Camilla Gag Galliallo, and um, Greg Kulowick. Um, Camilla is an ADE who's heavily involved with ISTE. And I saw a couple of slides that she had shared at the Apple camp, I believe, in 2011. And my brain just went because she had made. Um, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna uh, just uh, pantomime it here on the screen. Imagine that your kids were using Safari to do research, and then they were using Poplet or Evernote to take notes from Safari. So now we've got research, we've got note taking. Then once they've got their notes they could write a script in Pages or Google Docs or possibly create um, a keynote or they could make an iMovie or an iMovie trailer. When they're done with all that stuff they could also then output that to YouTube and then they could make a QR code um, that would allow kids in their class to easily get to their their final product. Uh, another variation would be um, kids could use a book creator, upload that to iTunes, and share that. Well, what what blew my mind about um, Camilla's presentation was this very easy flow and sequence of using five or six apps to get kids from here to here, and that was a big deal for me. Um, I really had an epiphany when I was watching that, and I was thinking, oh my God. When you think about Common Core and you think about the creativity kids need in the workplace today, how insane does it sound that the only academic output that we're letting kids have right now is bubble tests or an essay where they have to use only one font and only one size to be correct. And all of a sudden my head just went, oh my god, this, this is this huge process where Instead of teaching kids to do all this work on paper to do an essay, we're going to teach them this whole, um, I like to use the example of a quiver, many different kinds of tools to be able to produce the academic content, whether it's a website, an iBook, a video, a presentation. We don't really care, but here's a menu of tools. What really blew my mind on Camilla's presentation is she was doing it with K3 kids. Wow. So you're talking about really giving kids a lot of dexterity. Now Greg uh, Kulowick's work, he works with a ed tech teacher. He's done a lot of really cool stuff in terms of the workflows. And in the Google Doc that's set up for this session, I put links to their work. Um, but basically, for me, the uh, another example, because I kind of approach this from a, a video perspective, how many people have used uh, iMovie trailers, right? Awesome, iMovie trailers. Everybody loves iMovie trailers. <laughs> but if you're only doing iMovie trailers with just the camera, you're not doing it uh, as completely as you could. For example, why couldn't you have uh, uh, 
give me a thumbs up if you guys like action movie effects, right? You want to drop a rock on your friends, blow your friends up. Heck yeah. Can't you work action movie effects into your iMovie? And the conventional approach is no, they're two different programs. Well, with app smashing, when you when your kids are filming, they can work in those special effects like this the start uh, the Enterprise from Star Trek flying over your school or a helicopter crashing. They can work those into their iMovie trailers uh, by just simply saving to the camera roll. Once you save to the camera roll, you can open it right up in iMovie. Or another example is, what about doing an iMovie trailer that's all stop motion using the iMotion HD app? So the idea is you're giving kids this perspective and, and uh, dexterity with using the right app for the right process. Um, Doseri provides another great example. You can uh, use that free app to do whiteboarding stuff and save it to the camera roll. So for me, the camera roll and the idea of using multiple apps, that's the, that is the, uh, the, the seed kernel of app smashing, is moving beyond an essay, moving beyond a PowerPoint, but actually giving cool, uh, kids tools and permission to use multiple apps. I'm just watching Sam. I'm waiting for that puppet to, to pop up. John, there's a couple of questions here. We, of course, have a live audience here on TeacherCast.tv, and we welcome any questions. John, there's a couple of questions. What about an app like Explain Everything? Will that work for app, for app smashing? It's perfect. And that Greg, uh, Greg shares that a lot. And here's some fun trivia. Uh, an Apple Distinguished Educator by the name of Rashawn Richards and another one by the name of David uh, Malone, those are the guys that actually developed Explain Everything. And explain everything is a perfect model for that because watch the workflow again. You have the kids research using any internet tool. They gather pictures and or notes. They build what's essentially a, um, a keynote or a PowerPoint with all the slides built in. And then as they use that, they can move things around on the screen, annotate and draw things, and record that. So you're, you're gathering uh, materials from a multitude of sources. You're thinking about your plan. Isn't that good writing, right? It's sequencing. Mm -hmm. It's being on point. You might have to practice a couple times to get it right. And then what you've done at the end is you've gathered up maybe a little bit of puppet pals, just a little puppet love there, Sam. Um, maybe you've got some screen captures <laughs> from uh, some Sphero draw and drive stuff you've done. Maybe you've got a little webcam action. Maybe you've got some uh, pictures you've gathered. So you're gathering all those things and using Explain Everything to sew it all together. So my answer is... Yes, explain everything's fabulous for that. So have you kind of explored and given some advice on app smashing for purely web tools? So if you're not a district that has access to iPads or Apple stuff, uh, that there's some advice of where to start and some ideas for all web tools? Yeah, that's, that's a great one, Josh, because is this concept limited to just iOS? Is that basically what your question is? Is this... Mm -hmm. is this iPad only thing? Madness, um, madness. Of course not. Of course Just not. Going Thank from you. one thing to another, right? right. I've been uh, using a uh, basically a beefed up Chromebook recently, and have been blown away with the amount that I can do with Chrome extensions. Mm -hmm. So you I'm start from example, something Matt. like uh, the Snagit Chrome extension, which allows you to capture any image or video that shows up in your browser, and then you're either moving into Google Docs. Or, I mean, I'm sure there's a bunch of other tools out there. Uh, what kind of Chrome extensions are we using to do awesome stuff? Go, David. Yeah, and once you can screen record the games on, right, Sam? That's right. really the key. Uh, because you can already gather stuff off the Internet. But I would say if you want to see some good stuff, look up a term called Hyperdocs by Lisa Heifel. Um, Lisa Heifel's Hyperdocs. And they're calling it Hyperdocs because it's just good old Hyper Studio, right? They're putting tables graphics, link-ins, link-outs, embedded videos, all in a single Google Doc. So it's this very rich exper experience. And um, I think uh, the Google side really lends itself really well to kind of a scavenger hunt model where I would build out something for kids and they would drop their answers in or collect the videos and put them in the right places or put it in screenshots or maybe a quick Wii video explaining what they learned at the end and then embedding that. It's... Um, I would say the process is more self-contained on an iPad because you've got that save to camera roll feature. And with docs, you know, you have to deal with the fact that if a video is not at YouTube, it's pretty hard to put in. Uh, well, it's not hard, but it's just one more step. 
Hey. So, um, but you could take something from Camtasia, drop it in to your drive. Now it's accessible. So there, there's there's a lot of ways to smash. Now well, I would say it's top three, and I can't tell you what the third one is, but it's definitely analysis and synthesis because it, you've got those things coming together. You, you have to analyze what you're going to talk about, right? So there is very little um, just gathering uh, going on in App Smashing, and I think that's what people are excited about. It is. Um, it's a really fabulous moment to see a kid do this right here. I know what we're going to do with this one. We're going to use Puppet Pals to start the show. And then everybody's like, yeah, that's a perfect app. That's a really empowering moment for kids. That's really cool. And what <clears throat> what's great is essentially this is just introducing the idea of complex workflow. And I'll yeah. tell you that I've got kids as young as first grade that can manage a complex workflow that pulls an image off of our class blog, brings it into Sketch, opens it up, annotates it, and publishes it to our back to the class blog. Right. Well, I'll go, I'll, maybe I can wrap up this segment so we don't run too long because um, we got a long ways to go tonight. But <laughs> think about it this way. When I taught 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, when you look in the textbook, um, the concept of metaphor comes at the end of the year. Wh why wouldn't you teach a metaphor at the beginning of the year? And this is the same idea that we're doing with app smashing. Why would you say to kids, well, we'll teach you all the pro apps when you get to high school? It, 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 it's it, it's backwards. If you've got third graders who can manage four or five apps to get an academic product done, uh, all that's going to happen is you're going to have a better academic output. Um, and what I noticed in teaching kids metaphor is that um, there's a there's a saying, and I hope I'm attributing this correctly, but a guy named uh, Socrates said, Met a meta understanding metaphor is the highest level of intelligence because you can see the symbolism between things. And that and and so I think that there's a nice application there of a kid being able to identify we should use this app because kids that can talk and think that way worksheets not very challenging and or algorithms they'll eat that stuff alive because they're operating at a much higher level. I like to dance to algorithms, but uh, seriously, <laughs> John. I think that we have to be careful about metaphors because if you turn the kids loose with the metaphors, it can, of course, lead to metaphornication. <laughs> or Californication. Or both. And so that's everything that we have today for app smashing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we had a couple technical problems in there. Uh, we, we seem to be getting things fixed up and all. Um, John, you know, one of the big things that you've got going on this summer is something called Q Rockstar Camp in Boston. Um, I'm going to be a part of it. I know David's going to be a part of it. I know Sam was a part of it. And I believe the application process even allows for puppets. John, talk to us a little bit about Q as a company and, and what is a Q Rockstar? Well, uh, Q is an organization based in California. If you're in the Michigan area, uh, McCall would be your, your equivalent. Um, there's actually another Q in Boston, um, but it's it's there is the affiliates who are uh, PD providers. Uh, Q is a is a, one of the largest uh, on the West Coast, and they're a nonprofit organization that specializes in professional development, professional learning. They even do some legislative. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That, not analysis, but they do legislative support. They work with the California Department of Education to uh, advocate for education. And um, so I approached their CEO about five years ago and said, hey, I want to do this different kind of summer camp at my school. And uh, probably uh, the, the, the genesis of uh, Q Rockstar is that uh, I spent two and a half years or so working for the Fresno County Office of Education. And in that time, I was going to conferences a lot. And what I realized is when you go to a conference and you do that that 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock thing, by 2 o'clock you have no idea what you did between 8 and 11 because the data is just getting overwritten in your head. So that was one thing that I wanted to approach in the design. The other one, though, was that um, raise your hand. I can see all your video right now. <laughs> raise your hand if you're one of those outlier teachers at your school and it's tough to be in the lunchroom because everybody thinks you're a little crazy, right? <laughs> so one of my original visions was if we could connect all of the lone nut teachers, we could support each other instead of being marginalized by people all the time um, who weren't really wanting to change. What if we had a network of five ta to 10,000 of those folks who said, 
that's nothing. You should see what my friend is doing with puppets. That was a little puppet shout out, for example. <laughs> so, um, so what we came up with was the uh, Q Rockstar Teacher Camp, and and it, it, and some people at first they're like, I'm not sure about this whole diva rockstar thing, and and what we have to clarify with them is, this is a a camp that's about raising teachers' expectations for each other and building a network of teachers who are decommoditized. So um, teachers who are well known uh, for being helpful and being friendly. So if you come to a rock star camp, what happens is we have a two-hour lunch every day, and you can expect to sit around and hang out with the faculty and be treated as a peer and ask hard questions. And that's, that's kind of how Sam and I met. And, um, you know, and we welcome people in. So it's not the crazy diva rock star. It's, it's about growing more teacher leaders. And uh, it's a three-day camp. We start late and we end early. We don't start till 9:30 because we are rock stars, and then we stop at four because uh, that's about as much comprehensible input as you can handle in a day. So what we do is a two-hour session in the morning, a two-hour lunch, and then a two-hour session after lunch. It's hands-on and make and take. We talk a lot to our faculty about only spending uh, 15 minutes or 15 or 20 slides on the um, on the actual setting it up and presentation piece, but then the rest of the session is going to be making. So if you come to my session on iMovie trailers, you're going to make one. You're not going to hear about why they're cool. You're going to actually make one, and that's a really different thing than a lot of, of a lot of um, camps and professional development. And what happens is it's kind of like going on a three-day road trip. Um, everybody kind of really gets cool with each other. Um, we tweet like crazy. We had 80 people at a camp um, last. Not this weekend, obviously, but last weekend up in Petaluma with 80 people. I think we generated 3,000 tweets in two days. So we are talking it up like crazy. That's awesome. So talk to us a little bit about the process here because here's our here's our website here, right? It's uh, 2015massq.qrockstar.org. Certainly recommend you checking it out. Where are all of the uh, Q Rockstars this year? There's a lot of 2015 camps. Yeah, this summer the majority is in are, are in California. We try to always pick a staycation quality location. So we have Lake Tahoe, um, we have uh, places by the beach, we have um, try to get semi exotic places where teachers would want to go for two or three days. And then uh, moving east, we have one in Saugatuck, Michigan, that's uh, run by Andy Losick, another Apple Distinguished Educator. And then we have yet another one in the Boston area. So um, it's kind of starting to spread and, and grow, and it's it's really cool to see that we're connecting these folks all over the place. Now, I've asked a couple of questions to you, John, about the format. I said, is it EdCamp style where people can go all over the place? Is this people sign up ahead of time? And I believe, I forget the word you used. You said, no, no, no. At the beginning of the day, you get to stand up in front of everybody and beg yeah. for people to come to your session. What is that all about? Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that I noticed was that when you read that little blurb uh, on the uh, conference uh, notes, it's hard to tell if that person's going to be a good fit for you. So uh, one thing we came up with was um, imagine a two-minute uh, little – almost like a TED talk, uh, but a little more raucous. And the idea is that the audience gets to see every single presenter. Uh, it's a lot more like an infomercial. I think the TED Talk is a little highfalutin. It's more little, like, little blend, 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 blend. Yes. Well, that's where it starts. But as it gets more competitive, um, folks really – they really get into it. And the idea is that the audience can make can, – they can see that person's style. They can see what their energy level is, their excitement level. And, they, the, and we really have to offer our, our sessions to them because folks are going to immediately choose which session they go to. And um, it's, a, it's a really powerful experience. It's also awesome for the faculty because you're up there competing against 8, 9, 10 Apple Distinguished Educators and Google Teachers. And a puppet. Certified teachers. And a puppet. And you're trying to look interesting. And it really adds to your skill set as a teacher to be able to really uh, condense what your message is and really have a hard-hitting yet attractive-sounding uh, session. And so um, last weekend at Petaluma, we had a guy – who did a great job the first day. He did a great job, but he only had about three or four people in his session. And at Rockstar, when you don't have a lot of people in your session, 
what happens is you move in really close and you work together for two hours and it's still a great day. But he came to me that night and he said, I want more people tomorrow. I want to be cooler tomorrow. I want, I want a lot of people to like what I'm sharing. So I said, okay, try this. Try doing something totally unusual. Nobody's ever done this. Uh, put up a Socrative poll and give people two or three os options and ask the crowd what you should present. And he did it. He, he gave four options. He had live voting, and um, he had almost 25% of the people in his room having a good time because he showed off. Hey, I'm a fun guy. I have all these different options. If you hang out with me for two hours, you're going to do cool stuff. He even took it up a notch. He tore his shirt off in the middle. He had a shirt <laughs> under. Um, but he had a, a <laughs> estimation180.com is a really cool website for math, and he had an estimation180 website uh, T-shirt on that went with his slide. And so what he was telling people is, hey, I'm a cool dude. I'm going to work with you. I'm responsive. I'm capable. He had 20% of the camp in his session, and uh, a week later, people are on Twitter going, hey, I pulled a Fenton at, my, at the board meeting tonight. They're now emulating this behavior, and they've named it after him. So those are the kind of experiences that people have. They're really powerful for the faculty, and they're really powerful for the attendees. Now, the ADE and GCT angle, um, over the last five years, we've had around 40 folks that have been faculty for us and gone on to become Google certified teachers. I'm guessing that after this round of ADE, because ADE is trickier, it's every other year, but we'll probably go up to about 30 folks that have been faculty for Rockstar and then ended up being um, being named as an Apple Distinguished Educator. And it's a very similar process. Oh, I'm getting a note from the puppet. Um, there's learning that goes on at Q Rockstar, but a lot of times people are already at that skill level when they get there. The difference is they're being welcomed into that super tight community. They're, they're hanging right. out with those people for three days, and that really c gets those connections going. Well, we're certainly interested in seeing Everybody that's going to be up there in Boston again. This is the Q Rockstar Teacher Camp. Come and see me. Come and see uh, David is going to be there, and it is on August fourth through six, two thousand fifteen, up in Bedford, Massachusetts. John, before I ask you to rip your shirt off, I want you to give us a Q Rockstar. Uh, w what's the word I'm looking for here? What's uh, infomercial? Infomercial. John, give us your Q infomercial. Here's my here's my idea here. I want to learn something awesome and something spectacular about Final Cut Pro. You know, I'm a video guy. I, I'm here. I brought you on. You're an Apple Distinguished Educator. What can you tell me that's going to blow my mind about Final Cut Pro? Okay. This is just off the top of my head. Uh, you're springing this on me, but it's, I can roll with it. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that make screencasts. Any any puppet can click a button and turn on Snagit or no, Camtasia. No, 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 no. Sometimes puppets don't have any arms. <laughs> any appendage, they could use any appendage uh, to potentially, they could use their nose right on the keyboard. Um, okay, so what I would say is, as a teacher, how do you sing to your kids? Because they're watching GoPro videos at home. I sing to my kids often, John. Uh, yeah, they're watching quadcopters. You don't really think that just you talking on the screen is going to make them go, ooh, swoon, my teacher's talking to me by video. <laughs> they, they, we don't use the phrase TV land anymore for a reason, okay? That used to be a phrase. So um, Final Cut gives you the ability to have multiple screens, um, slow motion, freeze frames, and do things that you could never hope to do with screencasting just from iMovie or one of the popular screencasting tools. And it's amazingly easy to use. Um, I actually have a presentation that I can share with you guys or you can just Google it. Um, learn how to use Final Cut Pro in 30 slides or less. So I actually taught that to a room full of Apple Distinguished Educators in 2013. That was I taught 90 people. I had some help. Mark Hammonds and some of my buddies were there. But basically, we taught 90 folks how to be functional on Final Cut in under 30 minutes. It's not hard, and if you'll come to my session, you'll know what to do. Oh, by the way, I've taught it to human children, too. <laughs> Glad you specified human children. Yeah, human children. It's a variable. Does that mean I can get you to come here and babysit? Uh, yes. 
Uh, as long as your human children want to learn Final Cut as part of the baby setting oh. experience. Oh, they, they are they are learning Final Cut every single Sunday night around eight thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. John, can you pull up Final Cut Perfect. and give us a little demo? Yes, I will. Hold on a second here. If you guys have any questions um, out there on the live show, please. We are still live over at TeacherCast.tv. There's a lot of links going on. We will make sure everything gets in the show notes tonight. Uh, please uh, keep tweeting. We have a great show. All right, John, you already there? Yes, the picture looked good? Yes. Okay, so uh, here's your basic Final Cut interface. And as you'll see, it is not too unfamiliar with iMovie. You have, I've loaded up some random clips here from John Stevens and Matt Vaudry this week. They were doing La Cachina Mathematica here at a local place. So this is where my clips are. Anybody scared at this point? No. I hope not. Okay, good. So I can now uh, drop a clip down in here, and here's a good one. If, you, if you're into screen captures, get ready now. And that was the <laughs> John Stevens. Okay, so uh, again, very much in the iMovie realm. If I want to change this clip, I can just click on the magic wand. I can do things like enhance the audio. I can click here, and I can do things like, if you haven't looked at Final Cut before, you've got slow, fast, uh, hold, which is like a freeze frame, Custom, uh, customize those, you can reverse a clip, you can speed ramp, all the basic stuff that you would see in iMovie. If I want to apply an effect to this, I just click here. And if you've never uh, looked at Final Cut before, hopefully this will get it a little more friendly for you. Let's say that I wanted to add some noise to this shot. I just simply drag the effect I want, and now I have some noise. Or, for example, 50s TV, that one's even better. I just drag it on there, and now I've got a 50s TV look. Now, this is one of my favorite things in uh, Final Cut over iMovie. If you look in the upper um, right-hand corner here, I have the ability to make effects more or less pronounced. See, in iMovie, what can you do? You just get the effect, right? It's just on or off. And I'll give you an example. Uh, in iMovie, you get... Uh, where the blobs, have you guys all seen blobs, right? Blobs is very popular with kids. So anyways, you have all of these generator things, and some of them are going to look really familiar uh, from the iMovie side. Um, but what you get in Final Cut is the ability to actually control them. So, like, uh, there's one that's just called iMovie. So you can drag it in, and then I'm going to show you up in the other, uh, in the upper right-hand corner, you can change the colors of things, which you just don't get that level of control in iMovie. But that's not the purpose of what I'm going to show you. What I wanted to show you was that it's this easy. Drag a clip down, move it around. Very kind of photoshop in sense of the layers. Um, if you click on this little guy right here, you have about 200 effects to add, and all you've got to do to add an effect is just simply drag it over, okay? But this is the part I wanted to show you, um, is that you have this transform tool, and this is where it really gets fun. So you can now take a clip, and you can spin it, move it, and then watch what happens right here. So now I can move things uh, in front and behind of each other. And you can get these really cool kind of uh, different looks going, which can be really handy. Uh, John Stevens is going to love that I'm doing this with him. Um, so that's just the transform tool. And so what you do is you get grab handles, very, very industry standard, and you can uh, just simply spin things. So why isn't it spinning? Or you can grab the corner and resize. Then you can also do what is called cropping, and you can do this in your video. Right. Oh, come on, demo. Trim. Oh, I got to switch to crop. That's why. Uh, then I can just take this guy and just do like this. I can actually reshoot the video without reshooting the video. And then the really fun one is distort. So you can now take a corner and edge of something and grab it and make it uh, four dimensional. So those are those little cool things in Final Cut that are done very easily. If anybody wants to screen capture that and send it to John Stevens, that's a at jstevens009. I'm sure he'd be thrilled. Um, but those are some of my favorite little features with Final Cut. And some people will say, well, John, that's cool, but what do I do with it? Well, let's say that you wanted to freeze a shot there. You would simply go over here and go to hold. And then see this little red bar right here. You can make it hold for as long as you like. 
So you can have your video go like this, and you know, 347, hold, and then keep going, 346. Um, there's plugins that you can purchase that are very affordable that do things like have countdown timers in the bottom corners or wherever you want. So like for a science class, you can do some really amazing things. Now I'm going to do something that hopefully looks a little more organized. So I'm going to delete this clip and the other clip. So let's say that I had a teacher explaining something. I could put that down here. And John was all over that day. So I'm going to cut him. Uh, I'm going to go B for blade, and I can trim him. And then I'm going to turn his audio off. You just grab this little bar right here. So I've got John doing his thing, and he's pretty much camera right right there. So what I'm going to do is click on this, and I'm going to crop him a little bit. I'm just going to pull this guy over there. So now what I've got that easily is I've got this kind of control over video. Uh, people on the panel. That's attractive, right? I mean, you can control what's going to happen in the video. So now I've got this other bit that I recorded with my GoPro, and let's say that I want that bit to be on the other side. So now what I can do is this right here, and then crop a little bit here, and crop a little bit here, and hit done, and then slide that puppy over with the transform tool. And I could potentially be doing some really cool webcast kind of stuff, screencast, teaching stuff, very simply, it's that easy. And that's what's great about Final Cut. People will say, John, how many layers can I put? You can put 99 layers. So if you really needed, if you really wanted this shot too, you could go right there. And I'm going to take that shot and I'm going to put it here. And then I'm going to manipulate it a little bit, kill the audio, scroll up here. I'm going to click on this. Got my scrubber in the right place. And then now what I can do is click and transform this one so that I can have it very small in the corner. Got to grab the right one. There I go. But you can see the general dexterity and... Uh, in the old days, you needed a special computer to run Final Cut. I'm running this on a base model MacBook Pro with 8 gigs of RAM. You do not need a special computer to run Final Cut. Here's another nice thing on Final Cut. Did you notice that I've not rendered at all? Everything's in real yeah. time on Final Cut. So I just made That's this clip awesome. this link. I'm not rendering, guys. I'm doing it. So watch what now. Here's my little video clip. Watch in the middle. It takes a second. Now, when it says it doesn't render, you can keep working. Sometimes it takes a few moments for it to catch up. But I can do that kind of a thing nearly instantaneously. And so I think that's going to be really powerful. I'm going to show you guys a model of some built-out projects. Um, here's another example of what I like about Final Cut over, um, over iMovie as well, is you can, you can get uh, plugins. So here's some plugins from uh, Alex Gallner. His, his handle is Alex4D. So I can then put this plugin on this and I can actually extrude this shot. Got to hit done here. I can extrude the shot so I can make it deeper. Oh, please work. This is an older plugin. It may not work. Let's see. Extrude. Let's say extrude distance. It may not work because this is a little older version and I just grabbed it. But. Look, just look in the bottom left. Look at how many plug-in options I have. So those are all things I can do. This is a good example. Um, I'll take this one out. And I can do a circle mask. This is classic fun stuff right here. If I want to focus on something, I can literally move that around inside the shot. And I can change the amount of feather. And I can change the scale that easily. Very handy for a science project. Or let's look at this. So we've got this shot right here. Oh no, the camera's too far away. What will I do? Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to just zoom in on it. And so now when I hit done, it's too big for the shot. So what I'm going to come back and do is crop it a little. Grab the wrong one. There we go. And I can I can recrop that down. I'm in I'm in demo hell right now, guys. But you get the idea. That's what I do all the time. <laughs> But basically, all I'd have to do is grab this guy here and hit crop. In theory, when I'm normally working, oh, there we go. Okay, so there we go. See, I talked, I, I talked demo hell off of the ledge right there. So, um, 
But now I can I can I can actually change shots after the fact to make them zoom uh, in tighter. And then let's say that I'm embarrassed of John Stevens. Uh, I can do the sensor thing, and I can uh, take care of his face just like that. And it makes him a little Minecrafty, really, if you want to be lazy. Uh, that's the Minecrafty uh, John Stevens. So you can see how easy it is to operate. Um, what I'd like to do now is turn screen sharing off. Is that okay, Jeffrey? Absolutely. Okay, and uh, what uh, this is in the in the show notes. But uh, have you guys heard of the infamous math teacher named Dan Meyer? Not yet. Okay, uh, that's a big deal. So I might go back into screencasting mode in a second here. Let me let me look this up in my browser. Dan Meyer uses Final Cut and Motion to um, to do crazy educational videos, and they're all free at Vimeo. He's got like 200 of them that are lessons. And so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go back into screencasting in a second and show you guys an example of a couple of those. Dan is a uh, – he, in my opinion, may be the best um, math curriculum guy that we have on the planet right now. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of what he does in Final Cut and Motion to make really cool videos that are highly visually appealing to kids. And yet um, uh, they, they break through the clutter of what – is and isn't a math class uh, in, or, or a math inspired uh, uh, curriculum. So I'm going to jump back into screen uh, share right now. Hold on a second. There it is. So here's an example of what Dan does with Final Cut. You could not do this, right? You could not do this in iMovie. So he's got a three act lesson here where he's poured, as he travels around the country, he has gathered the exact cups that Delta United and Air Canada uses, huh. and he's created a lesson where the kids have to estimate the differential of what each cup can carry. Can you see awesome. how engaging that's going to be for our students? I mean, visually, that's the kind of stuff they want to see, right? That's the stuff I want to see. <laughs> exactly. And now, hopefully, as educators and excited <clears throat> learners, you're going, I don't even know what the hell's going on here, but I want to know more about this. Exactly. So notice this. Act two, so Dan's put it in reverse here. So I'm going to go back. All of his videos are at Vimeo. He's got dozens and dozens and, well, 205. Um, he's got things like this. Uh, this is one of my favorites uh, because he he, uh, he overfills the meatballs. How many meatballs fit in the pot? But you see what he's doing with split screen there, right? Yeah. And then here's another great one. Uh, this is one of my other favorites right here, finals week. Um, how much caffeine is he using based on what day of the week it is? So uh, this one's pretty funny, and it's only 45 seconds, but it's a it's a very nice work of art. <laughs> see see how the, oh, they get smaller. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and I believe that the question in this one ends up being, what is the amount of caffeine mm -hmm. changing? compared to the amount of liquid changing. That's a really engaging problem for kids. And the point, and I'll end the final cut segment with this. You could not do that with most of your screen cap programs. It's just not an option. So I think that's the reason that final cut is really worth sharing. I'm going to come out of screen sharing now. I think that's a reason that final cut is really a big deal for avant-garde teachers to be aware of is you have to be that good at manipulating media. Hopefully I showed just from that little bumbling around I was doing, it's not a hard app to use. Um, it's, it's almost keynote easy once you see the general workflows. So that's kind of my pitch on Final Cut. Now, there's a lot of people here asking about Final Cut, and they're using the word expensive. Um, okay. $299, $299. If you buy it for a lab, it's 50% off. So you're looking at $149 a computer to buy it for a lab. And now, what, if you are an what, Apple Distinguished Educator, it's free today. Um, that's one of the nice little perks. But uh, yeah, uh, so two ninety nine is expensive. How many people have spent that much on the Adobe Suite? It's just a. It's just what is. You have to determine what's expensive. And I would say in a two thousand hour work year, if I have to spend three hundred dollars to be better, that's pennies an hour to be almost Dan Meyer quality because nobody else is Dan Meyer. Well, and what you're really saying is that it's not, you know, it's it's not just that it's a better program. It's that it gives you access to different 
pieces of pedagogy. Like you can actually mm -hmm. be much more effective in video if you have this level of functionality and versatility, which right. I think is the argument that sometimes we have to make with our schools for, you know, they'll say, well, why do you need that? You can have iMovie. It's free on the computer. Or why right. not just use QuickTime? I and think don't get me wrong. Be... iMovie's tremendous. I love right. iMovie. It's amazing for free. Um, right. But these are the same people that might go out and spend $300 on Camtasia just to be able to screen record. And then when you're done, you might have picture in picture, but your output is still limited, right? Mm -hmm. John, can you say that one more time about being an ADE and the word free and all that, that, that little detail that you just kind of blurred it by? One of the nice perks of being an Apple Distinguished Educator is you get access to all the Apple software. For yourself or for your school? For yourself as an Apple Distinguished Educator. Nice. N not for your school. That would be bad. <laughs> what constitutes bad. A, a lab? If I have 10 computers or if I have 50 computers or five computers? This is how many copies you get, Jeff. Nice. That's, that, that would be not one lab. That would be one, one machine. And how does a teacher reach <clears throat> out to Apple and say, I have a, a lab. Uh, how do I get it for 50% off? Oh, that's easy. You just work with your uh, either your local Apple rep, or you can dial. I think it's 800 800 2775 and you you're just gonna do VPP, which is uh, oh I forget what the acron acronym is. It's volume purchase about, program. Volume purchase program. Nice. Um, and basically anything at the App Store, whether it's iOS or um, Mac OS, if you buy 20 seats of it, it's half off today. <laughs> so it's a pretty good deal, except iMovie, which is always free, you know, Keynote, which is always free. But some of the folks that are out there that bef – they, let's say they bought iPads before September of 2013. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're they thinking they need to spend $10 a machine, and it's really only $5 a machine. So once you buy 20 of something, it's it's 50% off. John, I want to say thank you so much for coming back on the show and teaching us about – everything it seems like under the sun we hit ade we hit q rockstar we hit app smashing if there's any questions john where can we get yes waka wait wait a minute w waka we're... i was just we're... i was just gazing at john he's he's so beautiful waka we're trying to we're trying to wrap up the show john so, I'm don't sorry. mind me I, i'm just <laughs> here hey who who gives waka the time warnings i want to know that i do i have the microphone mute button here pop it <laughs> John, where can we find out more information about the great stuff that you're up to? Um, I don't have a blog. Uh, at Jay Carippo on Twitter. I got 34,000 tweets, so you can look through that if you need a blog. I will also help you plug slideshare.net forward slash mm -hmm. Jay Carippo. We will make sure that we have this up on our site. John, you were awesome last year. You were awesome this year. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions about ADE, certainly reach out to John. Uh, great guy. Great resource. Uh, John, what are you going to be doing in the future? Uh, let's see. This is going to be a really busy spring. I'm um, keynoting a Google Summit in my hometown uh, March nice. 6th and 7th, that's going to be awesome. Uh, Google Summit uh, is in uh, Central Coast, Templeton area in California. And then I'm a spotlight speaker at Q15 this year. Got three big room sessions. I'm really excited about that. Going to be doing cool stuff with Future Ready and how to be a media-centric teacher and um, rock star lesson design. And then uh, going to be at a whole bunch of rock stars this summer. And it's just uh, I'm, I'm at lead three in Irvine in April doing uh, another keynote thing. Just, oh, it's just going crazy. Will you be in Philadelphia for ISTE? Um, pro I'm not planning on it right now. Notice how I phrase that. <laughs> I'm not planning on it right now. It, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, in the world I live in, it could change any minute. If you come out here, Waka will buy you a cheesesteak. <laughs> Ooh, he, that might be worth it just just for the plate. He, he has no arms, so you don't feel bad if you eat it in front of him. No, I heard he has Apple Pay in his head, so he doesn't <laughs> need arms to pay. He just waves his head. He's trying to get the group discount. Um, John, I know you got to run, so thank you so much again, my friends. If you want to reach out, please check him out on Twitter. He is an amazing resource. Let's see if we can wrap this up here. Um, next week starts our our entire month dedicated to Microsoft. Yes, we're making a little left turn here, but we're going to be actually doing Microsoft March. We've got five great shows featuring Microsoft 365, the Sway Team, 
We're going to probably talk a little bit about Minecraft slash Xbox. We're trying to get them on. Um, we're also going to be doing the OneNote and the Office Mix team. So if you are a school that's going Office 365 or is, is heavily into that kind of technology, definitely check us out. We have some great stuff going on. So uh, we will be back here next Sunday night live at 7 o'clock. Uh, Jeff, where can we find out more information about the great stuff happening on your website? Uh, you can head over to instructionaltechtalk.com. All the links to my social media and the articles and podcasts are all on that web page. Excellent. David, where can we find more information about the great stuff happening where you are? You can find me at Design Saunders on Twitter. Fantastic. Josh, how about yourself? You can find me at Mr. G Fact of the Day on Twitter. Now, now, now Waka had to run or else we would have asked him where he's going. Uh, Sam, where are you going these days? mypaperlessclassroom.com next nice 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 of course check out everything going on i want to say one thing before we close on our website there is a nice box that says check out our newsletter and we have a brand new box here if you will we are trying to grow our newsletter to heights beyond our belief we have a brand new resource a brand new epub featuring 100 resources that'll supercharge your classroom people keep asking me um what kinds of things do I use for my studio here? What kind of things do I use in my classroom? If you subscribe to our newsletter for free, you can download the 100 resources that will supercharge your classroom. We go into all about Final Cut, Motion, Compressor, all the websites that we go through. Uh, let me see if I can go through a few things. Desktop apps, all the images and photos. There is 100 resources here that we share with you guys of the th top things that I like to use, including hosting, WordPress plugins, podcasts. Jeff, did you know that all the way down here, there are some of my favorite, favorite podcasts? And I believe you're right there on this. Well, that's pretty awesome, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and you can even click on this and subscribe to the House of Ed Tech and subscribe to Instructional Tech Talk and this new one here called Learning Lab Radio with our good friend, Josper Fox. Check that out today. Join our newsletter, get some free stuff. And while you're over at teachercast.net slash iTunes, please leave us a review. Five-star rating would be great. Doesn't have to be, but please leave us a review. Tell us what you think of our show. We certainly appreciate it. And that is how you bring TeacherCast Broadcasting to a brand new level. On behalf of everybody here on the show, thank you so much for joining us. This is episode number 83. We'll see you next week. <laughs>